right, you guys, it's uh, Monday President's Day. I went and got my hair cut this morning and then just got out here in the shop and started cranking on the Bronco. Um, I'll flip the camera around and show you. Pardon my mess. That's all the stuff that was right here. Uh, somebody had made a bracket right here and they had a Holly Red pump here that was feeding that Phytec deal. We're gonna come out of this, sorry, we're gonna come out of this um, tank and go back to that one with a check valve so that the fuel can only go into that tank and not that way. There is a plug in the vent already right there. So it will vent through the rear tank and it should just siphon all the fuel out of this little tank into the big tank. I've got my fuel. This is my wire that I put here. It's gonna go back. I've got to terminate the plug so it can plug into the fuel pump. And then I'm gonna bring the fuel lines. So the fuel lines, I think I'm gonna bring them up over here and then work my way around and run them up here and then all the way up. I'm trying to stay away from the exhaust, of course. So I'm just probably set the phone up on a time lapse and keep cranking. It is Wednesday the 21st and we got a little held up here so I thought um, 20 feet of fuel line would do the Bronco and I ran short I had to have Greg order some more fuel line <coughs> excuse me and it got delayed so in the meantime we're gonna go to my buddy Ryan's um, this fuel filter was already on the car I took all the other ones apart this one was in good shape I'll Try and get it in the video. I'll show the other one. It was destroyed. Um, but this one's in good shape. I put some new ends on it that I had with some new O-rings. And I'm going to go over to Ryan's and see if we can make some type of bracket for this. Because I'd like to have it somewhere over here. Um, somewhere easy he can get the tire off when he needs to service this. Rather than tied up and zip tied underneath the, the vehicle where you got to crawl underneath there to get it. So hopefully he can... He'll be able to take the tire off and get to it easier. And uh, we'll go over to Ryan's and see what we can make happen. Ryan's over here laying it out on the computer. More angle on the dangle.
All right, good morning, y'all. It is Sunday, the 25th of February, and this should be the final day of us working on the Bronco. We have everything done. Um, you've seen we made the bracket for the fuel filter, and I went to complete all the fuel lines, and I had Greg order some, some fuel line. It's supposed to be dash six, and it don't fit. But nonetheless, I've got to put a few fittings on. We're going to run the lines to where they're going to be. And then I need to run up. I'm going to show you something that I like to do. Okay, or these hose separators. And one of the things I like to do is we'll go get a longer uh, Allen head screw. We will drill this hole out completely out. And then we will put, say, a riv nut into the body where we want to hold this or to the frame. And then we'll screw this all the way like that so that it doesn't move. Uh, and we will get all of that done. Then we're going to loop the fuel lines together into a bucket. We're going to get the holly plugged in and have the fuel pump prime. And we will let the fuel pump prime a few times and push whatever debris I couldn't get out when I uh, assembled and cleaned the hoses out. We'll get all that hooked up and then we should be able to start this thing. All right, I didn't film much because I'm just trying to get cranking. Greg wants this thing back, and it's been a long project for me, coupled with what I have going on at work. So um, we are ready to hook the power wire up for the Holly. I need to make sure the key's off and that we're in park. Um, and then I'm going to take you underneath real quick and just show you how I ran the fuel lines with the uh, rib nuts and uh, the little brackets. Um, you see me install the one, but I'll show you how that all turned out. And then I've got the return line into um, a tank. We also need to fill this radiator. I drained the fluid, so we need to put the fluid back in it as well. But I'm going to take you under real quick. I'll show you that. Like I said, I've got the fuel line looped. Um, and what we want to do is cycle the key, let the pump pump all of that fuel um, that may have stuff in the lines and not let it get inside this uh, sniper carburetor if that's what you want to call it and we'll get it all into a, a gas can and then once we've cycled it a few times and we feel like all the debris is out then we'll unhook all those lines hook them back up and then we should be ready to start this thing i do need to watch a quick video on the dual sink distributor uh, we do have it at 50 degrees before top dead center like they said but i need to make sure uh, something with these two little lights so uh, before i crank anything i want to make sure that that is good to go and then we're ready to start this thing all right, we'll start back here. The return line is going into this tank. And let's see where my fuel lines are at here. I've got the fuel lines and the, uh, that's the wire for the fuel pump all along the frame rail here. And then they go up there. Uh, none of this wiring is mine, so and we come up out of here, go across, and I've got those looped for the moment. I'm also going to have to tuck these back up. Some of the wires that I was chasing, I had to get in here to see where they went. So I'm going to need to tuck those back up. That heater duct, I'm probably just going to pull off. That was just ran up into nowhere and it was already ripped. And then you see I mounted the uh, 3.5 screen there. And this is my lines the filter supply and return going in there the fuel uh, 12 volt going in there as well and this will be real easy for greg to service right here where he can get to it nice place to mount it instead of just hanging like you've seen prior all right and holly says that they want all their stuff going right to the battery and so that is what we are going to do and i may need to this thing's been here like a month and a half, maybe almost two months. So we may have to, uh, may have to put a charge on this battery, actually. I didn't even think about that until right now. So the Holly now has power. And there is quite a 
quite a bit of stuff still here, but I wanted to keep this because that's what Greg's familiar with. But there's a lot less stuff. So the only thing back on this battery is the winch, which I'm positive by the size of the cables that they wanted that back on the battery. And then the Holly, that's the only things. And then I've obviously got this going to the starter relay and all this other stuff that I built. So we have power there. Let's get this filled up with radiator fluid. So I'm going to flip the switch to the battery and we may have to, I'm, I still need to do the distributor, but what I want to see is maybe we go do the setup screen, see if the fuel pump will run. And then uh, if it will, I believe the ignition key has to be on for me to do the, the distributor. So here we go. Moment of truth. Hopefully no sparks and fire. Good there. Now let's see what happens when we turn this key on. So we got the startup screen. I, I probably have to have to answer some questions here. Now let's see. Please one reserve for calibration. So we're gonna have to do that. I'm gonna switch where I'm sitting and I'll come back. All right, so we're gonna want, okay. No calibration loaded to ECU. So we're gonna go to wizard, basic. Number two next. Cylinders eight. Next. Engine displacement. Two, five, one. He's doing. Screens are so touchy. All right, like I say, there's some other stuff we need to do first before we even try to start this, but let's run this pump. Now, I think the pump, oh no, it just ran for a second. Sounds like we got stuff coming out to return. I'm gonna go check. All right, so I do hear fuel going in there, which is good. I'm gonna cycle this thing a few more times. I'm gonna make sure there's no trash.
around with that drain for a second and then I'm gonna pull it out and we'll kind of look in there. You can hear it still kind of draining, which is good, but I wanna make sure there's no trash in the lines as best that I can. The one filter was really dirty, but that may have been from sitting. That back tank, you guys seen me clean it. I did my best to get everything out of it. Um, the sock inside will catch anything that's on the inside, but anything in the lines, I want to try and get all that rubber, and I've blown them out and rinsed them out and all that, but still, you can never be too cautious. So let's see here. Put this in a black container, or a black. What we can do is, this kind of has some trash in it already. I'm going to dump this fuel in here. There's a little bit of trash already in that filter, but let's dump this in here and see what we get out. As you can see, that looks like a dead bug. So I don't know if that was already in the container or not, but there definitely was some trash. I'm gonna clean that out, cycle it a few more times, pour it in here, and then uh, finish with the wizard set up in the distributor. I cycled everything and I don't seem to have any leaks, knock on wood, but I wanna look in the engine bay. So I gotta get my daughter in here to help me. Come here. Yeah. I need you to get up in there. I'll help you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I need your help. Okay. See the key right there? This? Turn it off. So you're gonna turn it. You're gonna turn it this way. This back. Way. Now I want you to. When I tell you to turn it on, put your hand on there. When I tell you to turn on, you're only gonna turn it one click. That's it. Okay. Now turn it off. Now turn it on one click. That's it. Okay, Dad's gonna go look at something. Turn it off. Okay, turn it on one click. Perfect. When we're at 60 PSI. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it on one click. One, one click. Perfect. Turn it off. Very good, Smuggy. Thanks for helping Dad. I'll help you get out. All right. I have finished setting up the distributor. I hope. It's a MSD dual sync, so I had to get online and look at everything that they said to do there. I had the fuel really unplugged to do all that. And then I uh, went inside and messed with the screen on the inside with everything that I think I need. So here goes nothing. It started, but uh, one of the hoses when I was down here doing the drain for the radiator was touching the pulley for the power steering pump and it put a hole in it. So uh, we are covered in power steering fluid. So I'm gonna have to spray this thing off, clean it up and then change that hose. All right, we're gonna try this again. I fixed the hose. Let's see if I can show you what happened. So when I was doing the radiator drain, I had tucked this 
hose behind this pulley so it was just rubbing on it and uh flung stuff everywhere but i've cleaned it up as best as i could sprayed it off with uh super clean and i'm gonna start again and see what happens all right let's try this again All right, well, she runs. It's Sunday night at, like, I don't know, dinner time, 5.30, something like that. So I'm going to go clean up, have dinner with the family, and uh, we will have this to Greg this week. I don't know why it's idling up so high. Um, right, something I need to look at. It was idling around 1,200, and then for whatever reason, this next time I, I turned it on, it was at, like, 1,700. So I want to make sure that I don't have any vacuum leaks. And we're going to check the timing make sure our static timing is correct but other than that uh i will catch up with you when we get this finalized and get it back to greg all right you guys it is friday i think march 1st and uh, we have completed uh the bronco project so um the only thing we didn't get done i was gonna make like a top for the sniper and then an intake tube to come down in a location he wanted it, but sounds like Uncle Sam got the best of him at tax time. So probably try and tackle that another time. 
So for now, I've just screwed on uh, whatever old thing he had on there. I don't know what it's from, maybe a Chevy truck or something, I don't know. But um, it starts and runs really well. It revs up really well. Um, I'm not sure if he will have to take this to somebody and have it tuned or not. I know there's some self-learning stuff that if Greg wants to do that, he and I can pick a day. It's supposed to be kind of crappy this weekend, but maybe when it uh, is a little bit better and we can do all that learn stuff that Holly wants you to do and transfer it over. Um, but just starting it and uh, revving it up. You know, I know there's no load on it, but uh, it's pretty responsive. Um, runs pretty good, lots of torque. So um, that will conclude this long project. Uh, it took me <laughs> about two months to do this on my off time. Um, and I estimate I've got probably 30 hours plus uh, in doing this. A majority of that being um, trying to figure out some of the questionable wiring that was here. So um, that consumed a fair amount of time and just tidying up some of the wires that had to stay like for the ARB and for the, the winch and all that stuff. We wanted to make sure that all that stuff stayed but it was wired nicely. So I think a guy could probably do this uh, maybe in a weekend if you had all the tools and everything that you needed to get it done. You could do that. I mean, um, like you've seen, we put the fuel pump in the tank, which I think is the best thing to do. Uh, the fuel pump runs, like I've said before, just runs cooler and it's better and every modern car is doing the same thing. So. With that being said, uh, I appreciate you guys watching this series if you watched it. Um, this summer is going to be full of unique stuff. My mom's got a 1964 Chevy that was her father's truck, and she just wants to drive it. Um, it's not in the best shape body-wise. Uh, it's lived a pretty rough life in Los Angeles, but she's told me she just wants to drive it. Not really concerned with how it looks, but I think that deal there will probably just be uh, a mild crate 350 from probably blue blueprint engine <clears throat> and just get it running and driving for her so that'll be coming up on the channel and then i have a 1957 nash metropolitan that i will be putting together for a woman that has been trying to get the car together for quite some time uh, her husband has passed away and some of the other people that took the car apart have passed away some of those people i knew personally and we're going to try and well, we're not going to try. We're going to get it together. Uh, we're going to try and uh, prevent her from spending a tremendous amount of money on parts and salvage what parts she has by powder coating or polishing what she's got. But we will get that car together as well. And uh, Tim bought a 1956 Chevy. So I'm sure uh, there will be some work that will get done to that as well. Um, it'll probably need exhaust or whatever. So... Uh, some different stuff on the channel. Um, I still am intending on trying to make a nine second pass in my Mustang. I know everybody has their own goals of what they think is fast and makes power. But f personally for me, I just want to see if that turd can go nines. And uh, I'm kind of waiting on some parts to show up. I think I'm going to change the clutch to uh, get away from the ACT that I've had and probably go with a dual disc type setup. I have I'm undecided if uh, what company I'm going to use yet, but uh, I need to be able to slip that clutch and get the 60 foot down. And the only way to do that is to get away from organic material. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, that will come up this summer as well, I'm sure. And then we need to talk about Rocky Mountain Race Week or Drag Week or whatever. I would like to do it again with Tony and Tess. Uh, it sounds like they may try and do something other than Rocky Mountain. So as soon as I know which one we're doing, um, I'll let you guys know. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and uh, sorry it's been a while since I put a video up. All right, we have a storm brewing and I just got off the phone with Greg and he said just to drive it to his house. It'd probably be faster that way and less chance for rain. So it's gonna be like a first drive shake down here try and get it over to his house before it gets uh, rainy
ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ